Tonight we continue our coverage of black and missing girls. So often these cases go underreported and under investigated. Um, tonight we're looking into the disappearance of Ariane Fitz. She was just two and a half years old when she was last seen in San Francisco in April of 2016. Her mother Nicole's body was found buried in a San Francisco park that same month. Her murder has never been solved and Ariana has not been found. Tonight, Ariana's aunt, Tess Fitz, joins us from California and with us from Maryland, Natalie Wilson, co-founder of the Black and Missing Foundation. Ladies, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. Tess, um, I want to start with you. I know you and uh, Nicole, Nikki, were close. Uh, can you give us a sense of what was happening in her life when she and Ariana went missing? Um, at the time that uh, both Nikki and Ariana went missing, uh, Nikki was working um, at the uh, the Best Buy in San Francisco, and Nikki, um, her main focus was work, and for her kids was work for working uh, to take care of her children. She. Um, she found people who she believed she could trust to uh, care for Ariana while she was working. Uh, Nikki's devotion was, um, was like I said, was was working, and um, unfortunately, the people who she thought she could trust to mm -hmm. to look after Ariana. Uh, turned out to not not to be the case, and Nikki had never had hadn't seen her daughter again, and um, there was a struggle for her to get her to get Ariana back, and the end to that struggle ended up in Nikki's murder. Wow, um, I'm so sorry, Tess. You know, a lot of times we find family members, you know, have a good sense of what might have happened when their loved ones go missing. What do you think happened to Ariana? I think that I think that someone wanted Ariana. Someone either met this kid and fell in love with her because it was easy to do. Ariana is just the sweetest kid, the most yeah. bubbly, sweetest kid. And I think that someone, someone wanted her. Someone, um, like I said, either someone met her or someone, or someone just out there just wanted to have a kid of their own. And um, I believe that the people who looked after Ariana provided, gave this, gave Ariana to, to someone. Um, I believe that that they know the whereabouts of Ariana and and we, I do believe that Ariana is alive and is out there and I do mm -hmm. believe that she is being taken care of but that still is not okay. Um, Ariana okay. still needs to be at home. It's very devastating and heartbreaking uh, Ariana was two and a half years old when she went missing, and she is going to be eight this year. It's been five years, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's so incredibly heartbreaking to know that, to not be able to see Ariana growing up. Now, we want to show our viewers what Ariana would look like through an age progression sketch. Now, you say Ariana would be eight right now, right? So while we take a good look at yes. this, tell us a, a little bit about your niece. Even, even at two, I understand she had a big personality. She did. Um, she is um, my the best way I can describe Ariana is is just bubbly. Um, she um she would just get people's attention she has a great smile great energy uh strangers people who she didn't even know when we would be out with her in public she would wave to people and people would respond to that and they would wave back to her and she just um i just remember her being so curious about so many things and um just uh uh her 
I remember one of the biggest things for her that would um, get her attention or get her excited it was just big, bright, and bold colors. And I remember uh, watching cartoons with her and and uh, how much she would enjoy that. And she, like I said, she just has this this energetic and and uh, very bubbly and uh, personality. Hey Tess, I'm being told that we we've got a, a limited amount of time. I just wanted uh, to ask you. We we talked to the police, um, and one of the detectives said that you know this brought this broadcast, like B and C, right now making the case, really does help close cases. What do you want our viewers to know most tonight, as as we all try to help in the search for Ariana? Uh, I want everyone to know that first, my sister Nikki did not deserve what happened to her. And the way that we can help Nikki is to bring Ariana home. Um, we, all of, all of us who love and know Nikki, we want Ariana home. So we just want everyone to know that if anyone sees her, knows anything, anyone who they may think is her, who looks like her, just any tip or anything um, to please just contact authorities. There's a $100,000 reward being offered by SFPD. There's a $10,000 reward being offered by Best Buy where Nikki worked. Um, tips can be anonymous. Um, you can contact the SFPD. You can contact the Black and Missing. Um, you can, uh, anything that you know, um, like I said, can be anonymous. We just really want Ariana home. That's my plea, is to please help us bring Ariana home. Uh, Natalie, we've been doing these stories with your organization, uh, the Black and Missing Foundation, and um, for weeks now. And this sounds more hopeful of a case because when we talked to the police today, they said that they were following aggressively new leads and that some of those leads had led them to Las Vegas. Um, so talk to us and our, our viewers about how it's important to bring awareness to missing black women and girls' cases. Absolutely. Um, we believe that someone knows something. And for the past five years, we have been searching for Ariana. And all it takes is one person with um, some type of information to come forward that could provide closure for the family or at least answers. And media coverage, and we're so thankful to the Black News um, Channel, because it's media coverage like this that makes the community aware that someone is missing. And it also puts pressure on law enforcement to add additional resources to the case or the cases and take them seriously. But again, you know, this family has been devastated by tragedy twice, which is the loss of Nicole, Ariana's mother, and, you know, just trying to find Ariana. Well, ladies, I definitely appreciate having you on tonight. Uh, I know, Tess, it can't be easy to talk about this, but we definitely are committed to helping you and uh, you, Natalie, as well, in helping bring her home. Tess Fitz, Ariana's aunt, and Natalie Wilson, co-founder of the Black and Missing Foundation, thank you again for coming on. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you very much.